Psalms chapter 1. Blessed, happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now here's a guy that does not go to the, to go to the wicked for what do I do? How do I do it? And standeth in the way of sinners. He doesn't walk with them. He doesn't talk with them. He doesn't take a standing with them. And seated in the seat of the scornful. And I have met people who profess to be a Christian. In public ministry that we've had throughout all the years. There are people come up. They scorn us. Oh, I'm a Christian. Well, you don't fit what we're talking about here. That's not what Jesus would do. You haven't studied and read the Bible. And the disciples came to Jesus one day. I said, Jesus, we saw this man casting out devils in your name. Should we forbid him? He said, you know, forbid him not. And because your church doesn't do it, you don't do it. And yet, if it's biblically aligned to what the scriptures say, why are you being scornful? I let my light shine. Interpretation, I don't tell anybody about Jesus. That's the interpretation I get out of them. Do you pass out gospel tracts? Do you tell them about Jesus? Do you sit with, oh, I don't know. I just let my light, I always let my light shine. They're scornful. And you'll find these same people when we get into the book of Proverbs later, Lord willing. Psalms is a good book, pre-book before Proverbs. It prepares you for the characters of all the people Proverbs is talking about. But his delight, the man that does not walk with the counsel of the ungodly, the man that's not walking with sinners, and the man that's not scornful, his delight is the law of the Lord. Now, the writer of Psalms coming to this, the law of the Lord would be, I was going to say Matthew, Mark, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Bible. Our law of the Lord is the 66 books that God's given us. That's my delight. I love and I enjoy reading and studying the Word of God. Some people take it as tedious. Uh, you know, I'll just read my Psalms. I'm not going to read the Old Testament. Why? It's all fruitful. It's wonderful. It's great. Got my three chapters done. And now he wants me to read a chapter in Proverbs. I bet you watch a movie. I bet you go out and entertain yourself. And in his law, God's law, does he meditate day and night? So, okay, I got three chapters done. Yay. And I'll finish the Bible in a year. Yay. That's not what it's talking about. And the verse that you want to complete this, the law he does meditate, is the verse that says, study to show thyself, I mean, uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. That study is the same thing as the word meditate. It's beyond just reading. You go in there and the Bible is spoken about, I have esteemed the word of God above my necessary food. And the, the word of God is like in the milk, is like in the honey, is like in the milk. Jesus is the water of life. You're to go into the Bible with a delight of a diet, a feasting on the word of God daily. This is how the Holy Spirit gets filled in your life. This is how the Holy Spirit can work in your life. By meditating, studying the word of God. And he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. So this tree is going to have light. Those tree is going to focus its roots to where the water is. And Jesus said, I am the water of life. It's a tree of life. I don't mean the tree of life you find in Revelation and the, the tree of life you find in Genesis. I'm talking about it's a living tree feasting on Jesus that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. As Christians, as we grow in the Lord, as we're nourished by the word of God, as we, we divide ourselves against the world and the ungodly and the sinners that don't want to do right, and we grow by the living waters and we produce fruit, we're to produce fruit. Wait a minute, what would you say there? Our lives, one of the things we're told as Christians, what, what is the will of God? Going all the world and preach the gospel. 
plant seed, water seed, and have God give the increase. Word to, word to be fruitful. Word to be productive. And again, Jesus tells us a good tree does not produce evil fruit and an evil tree does not produce good fruit. So with what Jesus says and what we're reading right here, us being trees, and the Bible likens man to trees, we are to be fruit bearers. And if you just let your light shine, where's the fruit? His leaf also shall not wither. Light, a living tree. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. All right, now there's that prosperity gospel in the Old Testament, before a gospel. Everything we set our minds to, James says, we ask not, I mean, we receive not because we ask not. Because we ask amiss to our lust desire. There are some things we want God to do in our lives, and God says, uh uh, that's lustful. That's just, that'll make you sin. That will make you depart from me. I'm not giving you that. And there are things we ask God, say, God, to the glory of Jesus Christ. God says, yep, I like that. God, I want to witness. God, I want to do something for you. God, I want to study the Bible. God says, hey, that will be productive. That will prosper. Everything that you've done for Jesus Christ will last and go off into eternity. Everything you've done not for Jesus burns up, stays behind. Every Christian, born again, Bible-believing, or even not Bible believe. If you're a born again Christian, saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a tree and you're supposed to produce fruit. And if you enter into the judgment seat of Christ without any fruit, it's a loss. Somewhere, somehow, you're to produce fruit. And that will prosper. How will that prosper? Crowns, inheritance, rewards, well done. Oh, people want money, goods, property, job, material thing. Yeah, God may give you that. But if you live right, if you do that which is blessed of man, and you do what you're supposed to do, and you are a tree that is planted by the living waters, and you're producing fruit, there's a much and greater prosperity coming that this earth cannot enjoy. Verse 4. The ungodly, okay, the other side of the coin, are not so. They're not a tree living. They're not fruitful. Well, they're fruitful, but not for God. They're not going to prosper. John says, He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. They're like chaff. Chaff is when you take wheat, and you bang the wheat, and you and you ride the sled upon the wheat uh, on the on the threshing floor, and you break off the husk. The chaff is that leafy part of the grain that you don't use. Wheat has the chaff, and it has the grain. You use the grain to make flour. And what they do is they'll take pitchforks and their kind of instrument. They'll take the grain after it's been threshed. They'll throw it up in the air. And the wind will drive the chaff away because it's lighter. And the kernels, the husk, will fall to the ground because it's heavier. Everything that is a waste goes off somewhere else. It perishes. And if you don't have a life in Christ, you're going to be blown away and not of no use. The fruit is in verse 3. The wheat. Jesus said one day, I'm going to call the angels, they're going to gather my wheat into the barn, and the chaff and the refuse is going to be burned into the lake of fire. Jesus is quoting from Psalms chapter 1 when he quotes that verse. The chaff is the unbelievers. God can't use it. It doesn't produce anything but wickedness and vileness and sin and more sin. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. That don't mean, oh, look, I'm on my two feet. That means when you get before God at the great white throne judgment, you're going off to the lake of fire that burns forever if your name's not in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is not in the Lamb's book of life, Revelation chapter 20, whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever you plead, whatever you beg, however you do, however what it is, you will be cast off into the lake of fire no remedy, no works, no church, no baptism, no anything. 
condemnation, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Now, at that great white throne judgment, there are going to be saved saints. The Bible says to the Christian, do you not know that we're going to judge angels one day? And we're going to judge people that we witnessed to and we did not believe on Jesus. We're going to, tell, we're going to have to stand for people who had rejected the message of the gospel. And you better have the right gospel. So when somebody comes up to you and stands up before God, well, God, I never knew. All right, bring that Christian. Bring those Christians up. All right, here's your co-worker. Here is a guy on the street. Here's a guy that left the track in the bathroom. Here's a guy that wrote your letter. Here is your mother praying for you, young man. And that man that has rejected, that man has, has outright said to God, no, I don't want your way. Well, you did that despite all the people that witnessed and prayed for you. You're not standing with the righteous. You're going to stand off in the lake of fire that burneth forever. There are no righteous people in hell. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. He knows who the righteous are, and he knows what they're doing. Good or bad. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. So God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Shall not perish. You don't believe on the Son, you don't receive the gift of God, you perish. That means you go off into the furnace. You, you're refuge. You're, you're garbage. And God will incinerate you as garbage, as you do at dumps and garbage places today. You have no light. You have no sun. You get the wrath of God, John said. Because you're ungodly. 